Hey guys, so today we're going to be introducing to a new unit of measurement and that's going to be that of concentration. We're going to be focusing on a single unit that is molarity um, and we're going to focus on that but I'm going to talk about a couple of other measurements of concentration that you might see used in daily life as well. We're going to do some practice problems talking about how to convert both into and out of concentration units and then we're going to go ahead and show you how this is going to connect into the future unit. All right, so let's start with a quick definition. Now, concentration is essentially asking how much stuff is there in a given volume. Now, concentration is a little bit different than density because concentration talks about how many moles or particles or you know some other count-based unit over the volume-based unit. So when we're looking at concentration, the unit that we care about most often is called molarity. Molarity is represented with a capital M and is equal to the number of moles per liter. So when we look at molarity, we have a unit now. We have moles per liter or again, like I said, oftentimes you're going to see this as simply a capital M. So if we say something is one molar, it has one mole in every liter. If something is six molar, it is six moles for every liter. So let's take a look at how we can make this unit functionally important in terms of both solutions, but also when we get into talking about solution stoichiometry. So let's take a look at how we can get from moles and liters into molarity. This is a fairly simple setup. Because we know molarity is moles per liter, so all we have to do is take the number of moles of sulfuric acid, 1.724, and divide it by the number of liters, 2.5. That results in an answer of 0 0.069 molar. All right, so we can say that this has a molarity of 0 0.069 molar. We do two sig figs here because our liters has only two sig figs and this is division. So remember when we're talking sig figs, we take our least number of significant figures in a used value in the calculation to get our final. So two sig figs are our final answer. So this is our final answer. All right. So let's take a look at a slightly different type of problem. In this problem, we're given the number of grams instead of the number of moles, and we're given milliliters instead of liters. So the first thing we need to do is we need to convert from grams into moles, and then we're going to go ahead and convert from milliliters into liters. Remember, our final unit molarity needs moles per liter. That's why we're going to do each of these two different conversions initially to be able to get our final unit. So 5.84 grams of HCl. In order to convert from grams to moles, Remember, we have to use the molar mass. So the molar mass of HCl is 36.45 grams per mole. So let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to set up like dimensional analysis. Now we can cancel our grams of HCl. We're in moles of HCl, and we end up with a unit of 0 0.16 moles of HCl. We need to then go from 100 milliliters to liters. You can do this in your head, but we can also do this just as a quick dimensional analysis setup. We end up with 0 0.1 liter. Now remember, our final unit needs to be moles per liter. So we take our number of moles, 0 0.16, divide it by the number of liters, and we end up with a value of 1.6 molar. Now, you can list this as capital M for molarity, or if you just want to list it as 1.6 moles per liter, that's fine too. Either reporting method works just as well as each other. All right, for this next problem, I want you to try it on your own. Take a few seconds, pause the video if you need to. If you get an answer or get stuck, go ahead and unpause the video. In this case, I'm asking you to find the molarity of 0 0.0010 grams of aluminum chloride dissolved in 50 milliliters of water. So like I said, go ahead and pause the video if you need to, take a second, solve, and when you're done, 
go ahead and unpause the video. We'll work through it together. All right, now that you've had a couple seconds to work through it, let's go ahead and through it together. We're giving grams, and remember for molarity, we need moles. So we need to go from grams to moles. So we're going to initially divide by the molar mass of aluminum chloride, which is 133.35 grams per mole. Now, we've canceled grams, we're in moles of aluminum chloride. Now what we need to do is say, okay, well, how many moles of aluminum chloride is that? That's going to give us 7.5, two sig figs, remember, 7.5 times 10 to the negative sixth moles of aluminum chloride. So there's our number of moles. Well, we need to divide by the number of liters, remember, 50 milliliters is 0 0.05 liters. So we're going to divide this by 0 0.05. And that gives us an answer of 1.5 times 10 to the negative fourth moles per liter. So there's our answer. Now beyond the singular unit that we're going to focus on this year, molarity, there are a lot of other ways of showing or representing relative concentrations of substances. Many of these you're going to see in daily life. Parts per million, for example, if you're ever looking at a uh, graph that shows carbon dioxide values in the atmosphere, you're oftentimes going to see it listed as 400 parts per million. What that really means is that it's the mass of the solute over the mass of the solution. What that really is saying is that it's the grams of whatever the minor component is divided by the overall mass of the solution. You then multiply that by 10 to the 6 because it's million. Parts per billion, you do the same thing, mass of solute over mass of solution, but you're multiplying it in this case by 10 to the 9th because it's a billion. Milligrams per milliliter, this is oftentimes seen on like cosmetics and other things that you might see in daily existence like medicines or, cos like I said, cosmetics or food stuffs, where it's milligrams of solute over milliliters of solution. You might also see mass percentage. This is actually one that you might need to calculate in some cases here in AP Chemistry, and that's going to be the mass of the solute over the mass of the solution times 100. We talked about mass percentage first when we talked about mass percentage of an atom or an element within a compound, but you can also do it within a solution. Molality is one that you really don't use a lot anymore, it used to be used more than it is now. That's going to be moles of solute over kilograms of solvent. But here's the key. Each one of these represents how much stuff is there in a certain volume. And how we account for the amount of stuff and how we account for the volume can vary, and how we represent it can vary. But the most important thing to understand is in every situation, higher concentration means more stuff in a given volume. Lower concentration means less stuff in a given volume. So that wraps up today's video. Let's do a quick recap. Basically today, all we did was introduce you to a new unit of molarity and other units of concentration that you might see out in the daily existence as well. But remember, in chemistry this year, we're really going to be using molarity more than any other. I want to thank Charlotte Scanlon and Olivia Spink for writing, filming, and editing this video. I'd like to thank you guys for watching it, and I'll see you in the next one.